Hi, I'm Professor Steve Miller. Today, I want to talk about particular boundary conditions and their application to one particular commercial CFD code, the star CCM code. This way, you can see how boundary conditions are set in one particular commercial solver. These are very much similar to all other commercial solvers. They just might have different names, but at the end of the day, many of the boundary conditions have the same formulation and implementation. The first case I want to look at is the so-called flow split outlet. This is actually a combination of mass flow in conditions. In the lower part of this figure, you see one mass flow inlet and two outlets. Ignore the end caps of these grids for this instance. This is basically saying there's one mass flow inlet and the mass flow outlets are written as fractions of each other. You can do this manually just by specifying the mass flow rates dimensionally yourself. It's a simple example. You can see contours of the solution from the star solver in this case. Note that these examples are taken from the tutorials of the star CCM system. Another example from the star solver is the so-called SBEN. This is one of their classic tutorials. You can see the solution on the right. The flow moves from left to right here. And they've plotted the contours of velocity and magnitude. Here, in the single solver, they have produced a solution and visualized the results all within the same program. That's rather convenient and something people like about commercial solvers. It's an incompressible case of a diameter of two centimeters. Here they've specified on the left and shown the computational domain of a fluid inlet and outlet. They have a velocity inlet and a static pressure outlet. The boundary conditions are the velocity inlet, static pressure outlet, and no slip walls. You can see the solution on the right and the grid on the left. This is a very simple and straightforward case. You've already seen examples of this earlier. We've also looked at a basic backward facing step previously. Let's look at how the folks at Star CCM. Uh, created this particular case. It's a backward facing step. In the upper part of the figure, you see the domain. The flow moves from left to right. It enters on the left, enters on the right, and there's walls in the top and bottom. The flow might be turbulent, and they're using a RANS model to solve it. They've specified a velocity inflow on the left, a pressure outlet on the right, and these put no slip walls everywhere else. That is, around the backward facing step and then the top wall. This is actually one type of a problem that we look at in the projects in the class that students can choose to do. Now the turbulent Reynolds number of the flow is about 2800 depending on the step height h. You can see the solution in the lower right hand corner. You can see the velocity and magnitude. There's obviously the recirculation zone around the step. Look how far downstream the outlet condition is relative to the step height. That might be easily 20 h, that is 20 length scales downstream. If they place this boundary condition, the outlet condition, only maybe 4 or 5 h downstream, you can see that they would have never captured the full recirculation zone. A more complicated case is the external wing. This is very much like the NASA common research model we looked at earlier. Here's the model CAD in the upper part of the screen. This is ready to have a surface grid built on it. In the lower left, we show the whole computational domain. On the right, we see a diagram of where they've mounted this in the wind tunnel section. This is a fully three-dimensional case. The process of the grid is creating the surface grid, then specifying an outer grid for the aerodynamic boundary conditions, and then creating a volumetric mesh from those surface grids, which are, of course, watertight. This is actually designed for a race car, so many students in SAE might see this type of design and do this type of work. The velocity of the flow is going to be 100 kilometers an hour towards the wing. And of course, it'll have a 16.2 degree angle of attack. For every angle of attack you want to study, you'd have to do a new CFD simulation and create a new computational domain for the different angles. So here we've specified a velocity inlet because we care a lot about holding 100 kilometers per hour exactly constant at the inlet of the condition on the left. We'll also have a static pressure outlet and we'll put symmetric boundary conditions on the top and bottom of the domain. And we'll also put a symmetric boundary condition at the inner wall and outer wall. This is fine, but it does mirror a wind tunnel with slip conditions. If it's an external aerodynamics problem, I would of course recommend having um, something like Riemann invariant or Firefield boundary conditions that correspond to 100 kilometers per hour and the pressure of the day of the race. Look at the domain in the lower right. They've placed their aerodynamic test article at this location where my cursor is. They put the inlet of the domain about five meters upstream and the outlet of the domain 10 meters downstream. Many new users to CFD would put the outlet maybe just almost one cord length downstream where my cursor is. That would be a poor boundary condition placement and there's no hope of getting the correct solution. We see that we want to study it at Mach 0.725 and an angle of attack 2.92 degrees. At this particular angle, there'll be regions of supersonic flow and subsonic flow and a shock wave. 
let's do the CFD. We'll say that the flow is two dimensional. It's going to be statistically stationary, that is steady flow. It'll be compressible. It'll be in the transonic regime. The airfoil, of course, and its coordinates are imported into the solver and a computational grid is constructed. You can see one particular solution down here on the lower left. There's the overflow in the middle, middle of your screen. The flow is moving from the left to right at an angle of 2.92 degrees from the x-axis. They have simply put a no-slip wall on the airfoil surface. It's probably an adubated condition too. Then they simply place free stream boundary conditions on the outer part of the aerodynamic domain. If it's two dimensions, they don't have to put any boundary conditions in the Z direction. That is the spanwise direction of the airfoil. You can see the computational domain outline in the lower right from the star solver. The little dot in the middle, of course, is the airfoil itself. The outer part of the domain represents the, where the free field or free stream boundary conditions are set. All they set is the Mach number and the static pressure. The Mach number would of course be 0 0.725. The static pressure would just be the ambient value. So this is an interesting case to look at in the lower right for an airfoil. You'll notice that the boundary conditions are extremely far away from the airfoil. This is for two reasons, of course. If they put the boundary conditions too close, they'll truncate the flow where there's, say, a wake or all this development you see on the left, and they'll get the wrong solution. Also, the boundary conditions are more well-behaved the farther they are away from the aerodynamic body. For aerodynamic calculations, it's very typical to put the outer boundaries at least 50 cords, at least 50 cords in all directions from the body itself. This is just best practices. I ask my students in my research group to always put boundary conditions 100 cord lengths away from the aerodynamic body, if it's an airfoil, of course. Let's look at a particular star CCM case for the NACA style intake. This is originally for intakes for engines using an S-Bend. Here in the upper right, you see there's a Mach 0.21 flow going into this intake. So this is an exterior, exterior part of the aerodynamics, and it goes in this tube and wraps around and goes into the engine. There's some little center body here of the engine. They'll model this as a three-dimensional compressible flow. They could have used a single plane of symmetry, but that's okay. The geometry in question corresponds to this air intake, and the flow is captured by this so-called inlet and forced into an S-band which reaches the engine face. How do we model this? Well, for the outside external flow, we'll use a free stream boundary condition that specifies the ambient Mach number 2.1 in static pressure, at the very least. Then we'll say, oh, well, we'll just have a slip wall for the internal flow. We're not going to resolve the turbulent boundary layer. That's choice. Maybe we don't care about it. Then, of course, we'll have a pressure outlet, a static pressure outlet at the exit of the domain. This is really implying that the flow is subsonic. For these types of engines, it is very rare or improper for a supersonic flow to enter the domain. Um, it would probably be very difficult to create a supersonic flow going out of the exit of the domain anyway, given the Mach number and pressures of a typical aircraft like this. In the lower left, you can see how they decompose their domain. They've added the center body and this external part of the aerodynamic solution. Of course, this external part goes far to the left where they specify the far field conditions. In the lower right, you can see one particular velocity vector field near the inlet of this intake. It's a simple process, but I think you're starting to get the idea of how and where to place boundary conditions. A more complicated case, which is part of the STAR CCM tutorial, which I pulled out here for um, illustrative purposes, is the so-called fan assembly. There might be 12 equally spaced blades, and they're rotating at, say, 2,000 RPM. This can be showed in like the CAD model on the lower left. In fact, this model is directly in the STAR CCM solver and shows all the faces. For example, the red and orange area would represent inlets and outlets, respectively, and the fan blades are shown here. They actually move, so this grid moves at 2,000 RPM in, of course, the simulation time. Excuse me, in the physical time. Air will enter through the inlet at the top, and it'll move at typically 5 meters per second. You can imagine everywhere in the grid that is gray would have no-slip walls. We would have perhaps a velocity or pressure inlet on the red part of the domain and a pressure static pressure outlet at the exit. The flow everywhere here is subsonic. What is different here is that there's a moving overset grid, which we've talked about previously, that just encompasses as a annulus around the, the um, blades themselves. This whole tutorial is shown in the Star Solver. So if you can get your hands on the Star Solver, you can try this case. There are equivalent tutorials in the Fluent Solver, which is free and available for students online.
On the right, you see the CFT solution. They're just showing velocity vectors with magnitude that are approximately um, of their strength. And their color, of course, is the magnitude. That's the last star CCM case I wanted to show today, but I think you get the idea. You can go online now and look at many different CFD cases. Imagine or even read about in their articles and descriptions of how they did the CFD of what boundary conditions they've set. You should also try a few cases yourself in our homework problems. Thank you very much for your time. I'm your professor, Steve Miller.